As you know, this year marks the 70th year of the Society's existence in our community, and that is cause for much celebration, because that means that for nearly three quarters of a century, residents of this relatively small rural Pennsylvania area have been blessed to sing in or listen to performances of the same great choral repertoire which graces the halls of the largest cities in our country and abroad. It means that for 70 years, a teacher or a mechanic or a nurse living in this area who has a love of singing has had the opportunity to spend every Monday night rehearsing great music with dozens of like-minded singers and then to stand on the stage with a professional orchestra and soloist to share that music with hundreds of family and friends and neighbors. I cannot express too strongly how very, very blessed this community is to have this gem of the Choral Society as part of its fabric. And I hope we never take it for granted. <laughs> I mentioned earlier that the society began in 1949. It actually grew out of a, a women's club which had been created under a different name a half century even before that by Frances Washburn Atherton, the wife of the ninth or seventh, I believe it was, president of the University, George Atherton. And by 50 years later, the group was now called the State College Women's Club and in 1948, a group of them combined as a small chorus to sing Brahms' Liebeslieder waltzes, and their conductor and inspiration was Martha Ramsey, the dynamic woman that you heard Bim Condy's words describe to you a little bit ago. Martha Ramsey's passionate goal in life was to sing the great works of Bach, and obviously that was a bit problematic for a woman's club. <laughs> so. She and her cohort did some active recruiting in the community uh, for some non-women with tenor and bass voices. And thus was born the State College Choral Society, which gave its very first performance in December of 1949 at St. Paul's Methodist Church downtown. Bim Condy's 25-year uh, history of the society lists 70 singers as charter members, of which she was one of 50 women, even though she sang tenor due to the shortage of that always-in-demand vocal species. They, <laughs> they were joined by 20 men, some of whom were clearly spouses who were recruited at home. <laughs> and I'm happy to report that Bim Condy was still singing in the Society's 50th anniversary performance of the B Minor Mass in 1999, which also was my final concert as music director of the Society. When Martha Ramsey's husband took a position elsewhere in 1955, the Choral Society lost its indomitable leader. But by 1957, it performed its first concert under a new conductor, Raymond Brown, who had recently joined the Penn State faculty. And under Raymond's leadership, the Society expanded its repertoire to include major works by Mozart, Vivaldi, Stravinsky, Handel, and Haydn, in addition to a healthy ongoing do dose of Johann Sebastian Bach. I should mention two peripheral aspects of the Choral Society during its first half century. One is that in 1951, this had just been a couple years after uh, it started, the Society established a community chamber music series and it had a two-pronged purpose of providing high-quality music performances here in State College by world-class chamber ensembles and of making enough profit 
to help pay for the society's growing expenses. And world class is no exaggeration, since the very first performance was by the Budapest String Quartet, one of the most renowned quartets in the world, and over the following 25 years, or about 20 years, I guess, uh, State College audiences were blessed to hear performances by the Juilliard String Quartet five or six times, Budapest again five or six times, uh, Robert McFerrin, uh, cellist Leslie Parnas, harpsichordist Ralph Kirkpatrick, dozens of other similar artists. And somehow, this dedicated a group of society members who planned and supported this series managed to make it not only pay its way, uh, but to also provide those much needed funds for the society. However, after 20 years with the growth of the Penn State Artists series here on campus, uh, the Chamber Music series was reluctantly laid down by the society in uh, 1970, and after one year, of attempting to replace it as a fundraiser by a walk to Belfont, uh, the Society's new music director decided that uh, perhaps a group of singers might be able to come up with a more appropriate way to raise funds than by walking to Belfont, one that would take a little bit more advantage of their unique musical talents. So that young, fun fuzzy-faced director, who happened to be me, uh, proposed that a small group of singers be selected from within the society to present a series of Elizabethan madrigal dinners. And those of you who are longtime residents of State College uh, will probably remember that for the next quarter century or so, uh, the official launching of the December holiday season for many of us here in Happy Valley was that series of dinners, first at the Nittany Lion Inn and then for most of its years at the Elks Country Club. And there a banner bedecked great hall welcomed its guests to a renaissance evening of food, humor, delightful music performed by the magical singers and our good friends, the Nova Consort playing on uh, period instruments. But the core of the life of the society has always been its presentation to the community of great choral works. <clears throat> During its second quarter of existence, the Society not only sang its first ever performance of the entire uh, B minor Mass, and we did that on the occasion of our 25th anniversary, plus Bach's Passions and Magnificat and many of his cantatas as well, but also the great requiems of Mozart and Durafle and Verdi, Masses by Haydn, Beethoven, Bruckner, the oratorios of Handel and Mendelssohn, plus many 20th century works by Rachmaninoff, Karl Orff, Leonard Bernstein, and many, many more. In addition, the Society sang dozens and dozens of shorter works, often unaccompanied, uh, on programs with themes like America's Choirs or Europa Cantat or a Festival of Psalms. Twenty years ago, when I decided it was time to turn the baton over to a fourth music director, I was delighted when the Society, after a rigorous three-year search period, selected Russ Shelley as my successor. And over these past 20 years, Russ's leadership, Russ's leadership, has brought many unique and meaningful performances to the society singers and to our community. Among the most memorable was its commissioning of Voices of the Holocaust and its multiple performances not only in State College, but also in Philadelphia, Baltimore, Brazil, and elsewhere. And the society's collaboration over these past two decades with other local performing ensembles, such as the Nittany Valley Symphony, uh, the Pennsylvania Chamber Orchestra, the Nittany Valley Children's Choir, and others, has been a wonderful demonstration of the richness of our community's cultural life. And finally, I should publicly acknowledge on behalf of the four of us who have served as the Society's music directors the huge role of the many, many volunteers 
whose faithful service as board members, managers, librarians, countless other responsibilities, are the real reason the society is today able to celebrate 70 years of its, ex of its existence. I know that Martha and Raymond and Russ would join me in a long standing ovation in acknowledging these generous and committed folks who have faithfully served the society for seven decades. So thank you in the present to Tom Pancala and Suzanne Neely and the hundreds of dedicated volunteers that you represent who over the last three quarters of a century have been so important to the society's existence. 